Good morning to you. This is The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonian. And I am Messi Boko. Beautiful morning to you. It feels great to know that you all are on the other side of the divide. We sincerely apologize for starting behind shadow. But on the show this morning, ahead of the 2023 general elections, the leadership of the All Progressives Congress has peaked. Lagos-based businessman Tony Cole as its standard bearer in real estate. What becomes of the APC in Riva State? Also on the breakfast, experts say malaria killed no fewer than 200,000 Nigerians, affected 61 million others in 2021, and the country lost over $1.1 million, billion dollars, $645.7 billion annually to prevention and treatment. What is the way forward? And don't forget, we'll also we'll be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome, it's still the breakfast in Plus TV Africa. We'll just move slide on to what is trending. And the president is trending, and uh, a whole lot is also trending. But this time around, and, uh, a particular lawyer is actually you know, suing um, the president. But before we get into that, the biggest story making headlines everywhere in the ICT space, in the tech world, is Twitter. And specifically, Elon Musk is in the news. And he is acquiring Twitter, the microblogging site. It actually has been on for quite some time, but um, the deal uh, you know, has actually been finalized and he is actually taking over Twitter, uh, all its shares. Messi, I don't know if you've been following that particular you know, uh, story. It's like uh, one of the biggest acquisition of all times. Yes, yeah, so um, <clears throat> we're looking at uh, you know, the fact that Ellen Marx has actually been in this space for this conversation. As a matter of fact, you have reports saying the new Twitter daddy and that has gotten a lot of persons reacting. So yes, um, so it, it feels like there's a lot of mix, I mean, there's a mixed reaction as regards Twitter right now. And some people are saying, oh, the fact that you have Elon Musk buying Twitter might not be really, really good. And then that's because Elon Musk often has criticized Twitter over misinformation, calls for violence, harassment, conspiracy theory, and um, some people are saying, now, these are some of the things that he's talked about. Majorly, Elon Marx is very big and great on the issue of um, you know, freedom of speech. I'd I like to quickly run through you know, what he says about freedom of speech. I mean, his thoughts right here, because we feel like we're getting to a point where there might just be a new horizon, uh, yeah. having Elon Marx on board right here. So he says, um, free speech is a bedrock of functioning democracy, and Twitter is a digital town square where matters uh, vital to the future of humanity are debated. I also want to make Twitter better than ever by enhancing the product with new features, making the algorithms open to source, uh, increase trust, and defeating the spam boots and authenticating all humans. Twitter has tremendous potential. I look forward to working with the company and the community of users to unlock it. So we already understand what it is. But Justin M.O. say that a lot of people think that there might just be uh, you know, some kind of trouble. Now, way back, if you remember 2000, uh, 2009 or thereabout, 2011, uh, there were several hashtags. So if you talk about freedom, let's not forget that not too long you had Donald Trump, you know, kicked out of Twitter. And he recently he's, he said that he's not going to come back on Twitter, even if you have Elon Musk buying Twitter. And you understand what led to all of that. So he's been very big. Elon Marx has been very big on uh, you know, freedom of speech. And uh, so you get back to it. In 2009, about 2009 to about 2011, some people like to think that Twitter space was really not very controlled because you have people putting out stuff that were not really fantastic. For instance, you had hashtags that were trending at the time. Hitler did nothing wrong. Hashtag Hitler did nothing wrong. You had a lot of racist kind of comments and you know hashtags actually trending. 
So people are saying that if Elon Marx is talking about freedom of speech, we need to begin to identify. He needs to come out very plain. So not just I mean, in simple terms and language to tell us yeah. what exactly he means by freedom of speech. Are we going to get back to the time where, you know, Twitter had all of that toxic, um, you know, comment and content being put out? Because right now, there seems to be some regulation that kicked out, you know, Donald Trump for some certain comment. Mm. So it's, it's a lot of energy. Some people saying that they're quitting Twitter. Uh, they can be part of it because they feel like it's going to be a disaster and all of that. So it's a lot that's going on. Also, I, you just, I just feel it's a, it's a, they should just uh, give him a chance and let's just uh, l uh, see how it unfolds and uh, before they start making decisions of um, running away. But the, another good thing about it is that um, it is really telling positively on the shares of uh, you know Twitter and then um, the stakeholders are you know stand to benefit a lot from what we have been told. Under the new terms of their shareholders will receive fifty four dollars twenty cent in cash for each stock they um, have on Twitter. That's a very big deal, Mercy, really. A very good return, you know, just because of this acquisition. Well, so does I wish I had Twitter shares <laughs> right now. <laughs> the fact that he has like 73 million, mm. I mean, he's the sh uh, highest shareholder mm. uh, at the end of the year for Twitter. Now, also another thing is the fact that uh, apparently he wants to achieve, you know, that takeover. Uh, apart from the issue of, you know, freedom of speech, he's also talked about the long tweets. Mm. So you know that sometimes if, if you're very... You have so much to write. Yes. So if and you have so much to write, you get limited. Students. And so you get to a point where... Mm. You, so he's saying that he's going to reduce all of that, authenticate humans. And to come to a point where you have all of the ad, ads, mm. you know. So that's also calling for a lot of concern because those ads can be really wave of annoying. Change, and so it, change, it might not it. just be a lot. Businesses... Mm. So we're just, we're just going to get to a period where there's going to be a lot of change. Now we can really really tell what exactly the change will be but you can also tell uh, you can get from feelers, you yes know, you can from get the feelers from what he has always talked about mm -hmm. and some people say oh you have alien marks uh, being attacked by twitter or being criticized what he decided to do was just buy twitter not like uh not like you have you know the comparison was also made to mm -hmm. a president who said oh i mean he felt very violated by twitter and what he did was decide to ban twitter so you have Elon. Uh, Mark saying, oh no, it's a different thing entirely. So all of that comparison has been put out. But we already know where he stands. I'm um, looking at all of the things that he's talked about, freedom of speech, yes. uh, you know, long tweets and all of that, authentication of humans and what have you. So it, it's going to be a change. Some people haven't really yeah, embraced people it. Some people think that... Change, you know, but the fact is that um, some changes could be very positive over time. If no, you no, not necessarily. So if you, if you, not necessarily. If you talk about positive, what positive are we talking about? Even as we are on Twitter, it feels mm -hmm. like it's very toxic and it feels like it's not properly regulated. So you have a lot of regulations. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like I mentioned earlier on, you have the former president of the United States of America, uh, Donald Trump, being you know, banned from Twitter. Now, Donald Trump has said that whether or not you have Elon Musk buying Twitter, it doesn't change anything. He's not coming back. Right mm. now, he's very uh, Elon Marx is very big on having freedom of speech, and like he has categorically mentioned in his tweets over time, he talked about the fact that it's very vital to democracy. And so, what freedom are we talking about here? Mm. Are we going to get to a point where we are going to really have some kind of comments like hashtag uh, Hitler think, did I, I, not I, do I, anything? I, I think you, you, you know that if those kind of tweets come up, this, there's going yeah. to be some kind of restrictions, and that's what happened to Donald Trump. Mm. And so, people are beginning to say, So, are we to get back to the era where you have those kind of tweets coming back on board. I'm, Hashtag sure, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure there would be a way to actually control all of this in as much as he uh, uh, um, owns a majority share in Twitter. Now, the sole decision of what happens on Twitter, then it does not really lie on him. Really? No, How do you even explain that? Because Twitter is now... I mean, if everything is being done, this is a bid. Everyone said that this is a negotiation. Mm. Twitter at one time, once upon a time, said, we're not going to. After a while, Twitter is dealing right now. Mm. So the question now, I mean, the real deal is, if everything gets, you know, correct, I mean, everything goes well, yes. all things being equal, that's what would happen. Yes. It therefore means that he becomes, Twitter is now a private-owned company. company. Yes. He owns and controls Twitter. Yeah. And you know what happens when you have individual But he should know, also be aware monopoly. that uh, he's actually in need to make business. And if you're making decisions, you don't just put your personal interest first. At the end of the day, you should also consider the bottom line. Because if you're making decisions and you're losing business, you may want to have a rethink. I understand. But mm. let's also look at the fact that, for instance, come back to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, you had 
telecommunication. I mean, certain uh, service providers dominating the entire scene. And you know what monopoly does to an economy? Yes, but eventually we, it, the, the market was widened, was thrown open, and uh, you can see healthy competition. So, so, so do we have healthy... Down. The question now is, is there a healthy competition for Twitter? Oh, well, the, I, like I, uh, I you know. have uh, what? uh what's his name again <laughs> don't, 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 don't even go <laughs> there don't even start mercy all right let's just leave twitter so we can actually move on to other uh, top trend actually just one more top trend and um, this time around a particular lawyer is suing the president over the issue of uh, fuel scarcity in the country and uh, he said it is because the president also doubles as the minister of petroleum resources and uh for the country to be having all of this scarcity, that means he has actually not done well as the minister of uh, that particular you know, ministry. So, yes, it's very commendable. I mean, just, Ogun, just first of, how far this would go. No, it, first of all, you must appreciate the bravery of um, the lawyer. Those lawyer. I mean, it's, it's a very brave one. It's very a welcome indeed, development. Yeah. But we also need to understand, as much as he's a legal practitioner, one would expect that um, he should understand what the law says. I really do not know, but I stand to be corrected. The Constitution has not made any provision. I mean, there's no fault in the Constitution, or there's nowhere in the Constitution that states that the president cannot have, uh, you know, sh does not play a dual role, like he doesn't hold two offices or position. Mm. So the constitution has not stated that. There's nothing wrong. No, it's not, I mean, it was, it's not an illegality uh, being... Um, so, the, so that's what we're saying, because you know, at the end of the day, it's the issue of, you know, legal. Is it legal? Is it illegal? And some quotas or some quota have actually argued that this suit is actually going to be dead on arrival. Because if you look at the constitution, so. the constitution has not specified that the president cannot be the president and be a minister or act in dual capacity. Well, is That's he what I'm coming challenging, from. Um, the merit, let's look at the merit of the case right now. Is he actually challenging the fact that the president is actually uh, the minister of transportation, or basically the capacity that in which he's acted and um, the fact that he has not performed? So, so what he's suing for, he's suing for the fact that Nigerians have suffered. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of pain, cost, I mean, mm -hmm. hardship yes, uh, during that period where you had fuel scarcity, which was necessitated by uh, the fact that you have some element in the system importing adulterated products into the market and that caused scarcity. Mm -hmm. And so you understand that the minister, the president is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Yes. He also doubles as the, the minister, minister of Petroleum, Petroleum Resources. Resources. Yes. So if there yes, so are that, so, mismanagement, it actually, the whole uh, So, so but at the, the end of, that. yes, so it lies on, on what premise, I mean, that suit, as much as it's morally right, a lot of people, you don't forget the conversation that we had. It feels like Nigerians, we move all the time, including the media. We have already moved from the story. We're, we're going on to other stuff. Nobody's talking about it. Uh, so we constantly screamed and talked about the fact that uh, who is responsible for having us importing adulterated product, mm -hmm. products that are not up to standard, and that has caused a lot of hardship and for Nigerians. Someone should answer to it. A minister, where you, uh, you know, uh, a minister, where you, yeah, where you have the president himself, mm -hmm. you know, um, presiding over. Th there should be a lot of heads rolling. That has been the question. Mm -hmm. So he's showing that. How do you explain all of that? First of all, how do you explain it? Because the pre the president is, he's showing the president because he's the president, he's the also the minister. the minister. So in, in what sense? Now, the issue of citizenship, um, if you begin to look at the issue of, uh, you know, basic amenities for citizenship, I mean, a matter of provision of good governance to citizens, uh, constitutionally, it's not justiciable. So there's no, you can't really hold it. It brings us back to the, to the issue of saying that it would just be a moral issue. And you know, morality is not law. It's very sad for us. So that's why a lot of persons have actually cried out. Uh, if you look at it, we constantly say that our constitution has not done us any good. You look at those gray areas, I mean, that's the reality. Mm. So fingers across, this is me just preempting and saying, <laughs> this is what we're looking at. So fingers across, let's see how far that suit actually yeah, goes. Yeah, well, you see how far it goes. But the whole idea is that at the end of the day, Nigerians should not have to suffer all of this, you know, issues that have lingered on for so long, the issue of fuel scarcity, it's as though it has become so, part of, um, you know, Nigeria is in part of what we know, part of what we live with as if it's just uh, an, a norm. It should, that's actually an anomaly. We should not be groaning, 
you know, under the, um, you know, the pangs of uh, fuel scarcity in the country. We shouldn't. At no, all. so which is totally, I mean, what happened is, is wrong, mm. is, is not acceptable. But like we rightly mentioned, the Constitution governs the activities of a nation. And if you look at everything, so you're going to have all of this argument coming for that. You know, where does the Constitution talk about good governance mm. and citizens going through pains and hardship? Right. I don't know. So it's, it's just going to be, you know, a very hard one. But very brave a festival of uh, festivals. Uh, commendable. And that's the size of our top trending this morning. We'll definitely take a break. When we return, we'll be heading straight to the pages of the National Daily. Please stay with us as we return tomorrow with more interesting conversations, making the rounds in different spaces.